Hi everybody, Katie here, and I have a book review for you guys today. Yay! Um, I know it's been a while, and I apologize for that, for all like five people, five, that watch uh, my videos, but I have been reading tons. I've been rereading some series that I absolutely love. I reread them at least once a year. Uh, yeah, I'm one of those people that likes to read the same books over and over in addition to the new books I pick up throughout the year, which sometimes those get read over and over. Um, I'll try to do a video on those series. I'm not going to do it on each individual book because some of those series seriously have like 14 or 15 books in them. So yeah, I don't want to just keep going and going and going with like the same thing and a lot of the characters cross over too so it's you know you still get to see them after their book is done which is nice it does get kind of confusing though with some of those books that have like 14 or 15 different uh storylines that you kind of by the time you get to book 13 you're like wait okay this couple in book one oh yeah so that's where I have been that and just like really involved with my kid and his school and just hanging out with my family. It's been great, but now I'm back. Um, I'm going to be bringing y'all more book reviews. I find it's easier for me to do them on video instead of writing it all out because I just, I get too ADD when I'm trying to write them out. And I'll probably get ADD doing this. My dog will do something and I'll look over or whatever. That and um, hopefully they're repairing our water Right now, they're doing something. Or no, they're giving us a new water meter. I don't know. Last time they did this, I literally heard, like, this poo explosion. I don't know if you've ever seen Dogma, where the poo demon comes out in the strip club. That's what happened in my downstairs bathroom. They somehow um, did something with pressure, and literally, it was a poo storm in my downstairs bathroom from my neighborhood and I went out there yelling and screaming and demanding that they come in and clean my house. And all they did was hand me a pair of rubber gloves. It's like, are you kidding me? Yeah. So thanks for that, Houston water people. Any hoodle. Let's just pray that doesn't happen again. All right? Thanks, boo. All right. So here we go. The book that I have for you guys this week, I um, it's called This Is Where I Leave You. I have my list here on my phone of like points um this you probably have heard of the movie it has like Jason Bateman and Tina Fey and Jane Fonda and that guy from Girls in it and that chick that's always in like country type stuff um she's on like I think the show Nashville I don't watch it it's one show I have wanted to watch um she's on that and I think she was on Friday Night Lights another show I didn't watch I know and I'm from Texas sue me um anyway she's in it and I have not seen the movie. Y'all know my rule. If there is a book of it, I'm not, I gotta read the book first. Um, so I don't know how it compares to the movie. If you've seen the movie, let me know in the comments so we can compare and see if Hollywood has completely ruined this. Like Silver Linings Playbook, to me, Hollywood kind of ruined that because the book was so amazing. It's still one of my like top time off like five favorite books. But the movie was just, uh, it was the movie, you know, wasn't anything great. But the book was so great. So hopefully, um, hopefully the movie is a little better than this book. Um, I liked the book, don't get me wrong, and this is the point where I'm going to tell you there will be spoilers. So if you want to be surprised during the book, or like I said, I don't know how the movie compares, so, um... You might want to stop watching now if you don't want spoilers. So, here's your option. Okay, so if you're still watching, that means you want spoilers. So, it starts with main character Judd. He is, I guess, the Jason Bateman. Um, he has found out his wife is cheating on him with his boss, who's like a Howard Stern type of guy, like a disc jockey, um, just, you know, huge jerk. His wife that was his college sweetheart, he walks in on them sleeping together, and that happens, he goes to live in the basement of, like, an old couple's house, and of course he doesn't have a job because he's quit his job since his boss was sleeping with his wife, and then his father dies, 
So he goes back to the little small town he grew up in. It's some East Coast town. They're, like, all the same. Um, but really, this could, town could be anywhere in America. Um, he goes back to the town where his brother and sister are already there. They have a younger brother who's a lot younger than them. He's like a surprise baby who's just kind of like got wanderlust. He's all over the place and like they'll bail him out of jail one day but then see him like, you know, doing something crazy like on a TV show or something like that the next. So he's just one of those guys that kind of floats through life, you know. And, um, you know, they're wondering if he's going to show up. They're at the funeral and he shows up and the rabbi is a family friend of his, theirs that used to be, like, this pervy little kid that they called Boner. So the younger brother, Philip, was like, oh, hey, what's up, Boner, in the middle of this funeral service to the rabbi. Because that was his nickname, because, like I said, he was a pervy kid. So, you know, all that ensues. They go back to the house for, like, um, they no, they did not have like a reception is that like a southern thing are we the only people that have like big receptions after a funeral where you have like tons of funeral casseroles and things like that like there's like a million rolls i don't know what it is about rolls and funerals but it's like hand in hand anyway they go back to the parents house now all the siblings are there the oldest brother paul sister wendy her like crazy business minded he's like only a quarter there because he's like always on the phone making a deal husband there are three kids uh philip and then his older brother paul his their wife alice his wife alice not their wife anyway they're all there boner comes and says that the father found religion in his final days connected back with his jewish jewish faith and wants everybody to sit um, shiva at after the funeral, in which I'm not Jewish, so I don't really know much about the Jewish traditions. Um, so I learned something in this book so where they sit for seven days in little chairs, and the mourners come and they um, like leave a donation, uh, kind of like the offering basket they pass around at church. I'm pretty sure that's universal. Um, and there's a candle lit, and the family, they're not supposed to go anywhere, do anything, that kind of deal. And people just come and comfort them. And so, they're supposed to do that. The mom's kind of excited about it. She's like, yeah, I got all my kids under one roof. Y'all are all grounded. Which I think that part is in, like, the trailers that you see on TV for the show. Uh, or the movie. So, of course, you know, everybody's upset. The son-in-law's like, oh, I'm a big businessman. I can't be away for seven days. And the oldest brother's like, but I run dad's store. What am I going to do? And the sister's just like, oh, great. I hate these people. And Judd's like, whatever. You know, my wife is sleeping with my boss. And then, spoiler alert time, we find out that his wife is pregnant. Oh, but it's not his baby. No. Or at least he doesn't think it is. But then we find out it is his baby. Because the dude that she's sleeping with is sterile. Oh, plot twist. So he's dealing with that. He's dealing with losing his father. And now he's going to become a father. And one thing I wanted to point out. Y'all have to forgive me because I actually filmed this video earlier. And that's when I found out my computer is just bleh. And uh, apparently didn't record it. So I just sat here talking to myself. Looking at the computer screen. Anyway, one thing that stuck with me, and like, of course, the woman cheated on him. Like, that's awful. But then he said something. And as a woman, I was just like, oh, girl, you need to haul off and hit him. Like, they had had been pregnant before, before all the cheating and everything. And she gave birth to a stillborn boy. The umbilical cord was wrapped around his neck. So when she tells him that, he's pre that she's pregnant, he tells her, um, I hope his baby has better luck in there than mine did. What? Like, that's just, like, I understand, like, wanting to say something or hurt a person, but damn, that's cold-blooded. Like, whoa. So, like, I already kind of didn't like Judd just because of that one comment. And like I said, I understand wanting to use your words to hurt somebody. I've been there. I've been in that position. Well, not that exact position. Not, like, walking in and, like, 
bleh, but like just angry because I've got a short fuge. I hulk out. But like, whoa. So that happened. He finds out the baby's his. He is just kind of flipping out. And like, like I said, you know, that part's understandable. His dad just died. You know, all that. He wasn't going to tell his family. Well, he tell the youngest brother, Philip, who is hilarious, by the way. He overhears it. And, of course, in a moment of trying to save his own ass, but from getting all the family ridicule and scorn, he outs Judd as being baby daddy. So at that moment, Alice, Paul's wife, the oldest brother, she flips out because they've been having issues trying to conceive. And so she goes upstairs. Nobody sees her for the rest of the day. And later on, because Judd's staying in the basement, um, she comes down there like a morning or two later and basically rapes him because she's convinced it's her husband's fault while she's not getting pregnant. So she's going to take Judd's seed and get herself pregnant. There's nothing else that really comes of that. We don't ever find out if she got pregnant or not. We know that, like, it's awkward between them. They have, like, a moment, and he's like, we're not okay yet, but we will be. And here's another thing. They had dated in the past. Like, they'd lost their virginities to each other, and that was something Paul was never really able to deal with, the fact that, you know, his brother had slept with his wife, but it was kind of like, you know, they were in high school. It was he, She was kind of his high school sweetheart. So really, Paul knew that going into it, so he had no right to be angry. So he's, Paul's angry at the world. He had um, some super promising baseball career ahead of him. And then while trying to stick up for Judd, who had gotten in like a fight, um, this is all after high school, there's a dog attack and the dog like just tore up his shoulder. This guy had been a pitcher, tore up his shoulder. And he always kind of blamed Judd for that. And just their relationship. This is all in the family's relationships building. Here's what I didn't like. The book was good. I mean, it's one of those books I would recommend reading it just because, I mean, it didn't suck. But I felt like there was no closure with anything. I mean, yeah, we find out Judd's having a girl, but I, we don't know if he got back together with his wife or not because she split up with the boyfriend, adulterer boss, uh, homewrecking boss. Um, we don't know if Alice got pregnant or not. We do know that his mother is a lesbian now with her best friend, which it was not considered adultery because the father knew and encouraged it, you know, his man. And, um, it just kind of ends with Judd driving off in the sunset in his brother's Porsche that his old girlfriend had bought him. It was a good book. Um, normally I read my books in about 24 hours or so. Especially if it's a really good book, I'll stay up all night reading it and I'll finish it in a day. This one took me about a week to get through. Um, and I honestly didn't have much go else going on. It just, I didn't have that urge to be like, oh my god, I need to read this book right now. Like I said, I would recommend reading it. I gave it three stars on Good Goodreads, and I'll put my Goodreads link below. So if you want to follow along with my Goodreads, you certainly can. And like I said, if you've seen the movie, and especially if you've seen the movie and read the book, I would really like to know if they're anything the same. I'm probably not going to go see the movie while it's in theaters. I'll just get it on DVR or HBO, whatever. So let me know what you think. This book was... It was good. Um, there's definitely a lot of funny moments in it, and I could see why they cast Tina Fey as Wendy. Um, because, yeah, I think she's the only person that could be that funny. Um, Wendy was definitely my favorite character. Um, I just... I don't know. The book was okay. It wasn't anything wonderful. It wasn't anything awful. It was there. It was a good you know, week-long distraction, I guess I would say. So anyways, be sure to let me know what you think of the book if you've read it. If you have any questions, be sure to comment below and I'll try to answer them for you. And it was great talking to you guys. Um, I will be back probably later on um, this weekend. P um, P's off of school tomorrow and he has been dying to film a video and we just got the new Disney Avengers uh 
Affinity game, and I think he wants to do a review on that because for some reason my child thinks he can be a YouTube star, which just makes me nervous. So I'm going to go ahead and let him do that. And we'll either film that today, it's early release day, or tomorrow when he's off of school. So be sure to look for that, because you know when he gets on the camera, it's just hilarious. So I will talk to you guys later. Have a great day. Bye.